Dear viewers, welcome to our channel. In this video, we are going to discuss about disk break types and their operation. A disk break consists of a rotating disk, which we call it the rotor, and a caliper that houses the pistons and uh, have support for the brake parts. When the brake pedal is depressed, hydraulic pressure will be generated and that hydraulic pressure will cause the piston to move to one side and the brake parts will be pressed against the rotating rotor. So how do they operate? This is how it operates. Hydraulic pressure coming from the master cylinder will be introduced in this chamber. That hydraulic pressure will act in all direction. Hydraulic pressure is acting in all direction when it is applied in a closed chamber. So piston will be pushed to this side, the caliper will be pushed to this side. When hydraulic pressure is introduced in this chamber, hydraulic pressure is pushing the piston in this direction and the caliper will be pushed in this direction. Let's simulate and see. Look, when hydraulic pressure is admitted, it will act like this. Look, piston will be pushed to that direction. This is what happens. When the caliper is moved to this side, it will break, it will press this brake pad on the rotor and when the piston is moving this side it will press this rotor on this friction pad on the rotor so the caliper is sliding on that friction surface so the rotor will be sandwiched between these two brake pads so that is how the disc type brake operates disc brakes can be classified depending on the caliper they are utilizing fixed caliper type the fixed caliper type disc brake is rigidly mounted on the spindle and there are pistons on both sides of the caliper. There is a central drilling that joins the two calipers. So hydraulic pressure will be simultaneously applied on pistons of both sides. In this design, the caliper usually is made in two pieces and it has either two or more pistons in use. For example, in this video we see a fixed caliper type design with two pistons, one on each side. Whereas this one is a design where we have four pistons, two on each side. As brake is applied, fluid pressure enters the caliper on one side and is directed through an internal passage to the other side. Or it can be directed by an external tube connected to the opposite half of the caliper. So as pressure increases, the piston forces the brake parts against the rotors. There is a floating caliper type disc brake. The floating caliper type disc brake is designed to move laterally on a pin on its mount. This movement allows the caliper to maintain a centered position with respect to the rotor. This design also permits the braking force to be applied equally to both sides of the rotor. The floating caliper usually is one piece solid construction and uses single piston to develop the braking force. As you can see on this video, the floating caliper type is floating on a pin. There is one pin on the upper side, there is another pin on the lower side, so the entire caliper will float on that pin. This is a floating type caliper, disc brake. See, the caliper is a floating type. Piston on this side, this is a piston. This is the caliper. What makes it floating is that the caliper is sliding on this pin. So when brake is applied, the caliper will be sliding on this pin. That is why we call it floating. There is a missing pin on the upper side. So the caliper will be sliding on here. Hydraulic pressure, when brake is applied, hydraulic pressure is acting. A piston is inside, a piston is moving this way. The housing will be pushed to that side. This is a floating type. Sliding caliper type. The sliding caliper type disc brake is mounted on a slot 
in the caliper adapter. It is a variation of the floating caliper type using a single piston and operating on the same principle. The only difference lies on the way the caliper is sliding. Instead of being mounted on a pin, the sliding caliper type has a machined surface. The caliper is sliding on a machined surface. So we have a sliding contact so on which the caliper slides when brake is applied. Hydraulic pressure will be fed through this line and that hydraulic pressure will be introduced in this cavity between the caliper housing and the piston. So that hydraulic pressure will force the piston in this direction. The piston will move outward and that same hydraulic pressure will push this caliper in this direction. So the hydraulic pressure is like pushing them apart. Caliper is moving to the right, piston is moving to the left. Now what will happen when caliper is moved to this side, it will slide on this metal. The caliper is sliding on this surface. On the upper, similarly, you can see on the upper, the caliper is sliding on this machine surface. The caliper is sliding on that surface. That is why we call it sliding type. When you compare the disc brake and uh, the drum brake, the disc brake has some advantages and some disadvantage. The disadvantage is that we have no self-energizing action as we have in the drum brake, but there are advantages. For example, we have good air ventilation of the disc because most of the disc pad is outside, vented to the atmosphere. That provides a low average disc temperature which results in very nice friction. There is a flat friction contact between the brake pad and the disc. This produces uniform pad wear. Uniform hydraulic pressure will be applied on both sides of the disc when brake is applied. This provides equal grip on the disc. So the clearance between the pad and the disc is automatically compensated as pads wear. So the, there is no need of clearance adjustment. Disc brakes are simple in design, but they have very few parts to wear and very few parts to malfunction. The friction pad and the friction disc can easily be removed and they can easily be serviced and replaced. Well, in disc brake, the brake pads squeeze the rotor. Force is transmitted hydraulically. Friction between the parts and the disc slows the disc down. Thank you for watching. Please stay tuned for more videos of this kind.